The Unsolved Mystery of Thomas Dick, The Theory, Calculation, and Alien Enigma. Thomas Dick, the scientist who calculated that 22 billion aliens live in the solar system. In 1837, the Scottish scientist Thomas Dick had a great idea to build a huge triangle or ellipse several kilometers long in Siberia or any other place. He calculated that since there are about 22 billion aliens living in our solar system, for 0.2 billion of which are on the moon, even if they don't have the telescope technology to spy the triangular structure, surely some would have eyes powerful enough to, to be able to see it without any help. Perhaps realizing how crazy the idea was, Dick added, In all the ages of the world far more foolish and pretentious plans have been conceived and carried out than those which I propose. However, how did Dick arrive at these numbers? At that time, there was an average of 280 people per square kilometer in England. And because every surface in our universe was thought to have life, the alien population density must have been about the same. So from comets and asteroids to Saturn's rings, if you knew how big a surface was, you could guess how many creatures lived there. Thus, Jupiter would be the most populated object in the solar system, with 7 billion beings. The least populated would be Vesta, the second largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, with only 64 million beings. And although he was a rigorous scholar, Dick was also a very religious man, one of the last of the so-called natural theologians looking for signs of God's influence on nature, that is, without recourse to any supernatural revelation. To this astronomer, it simply did not make sense that God would have created the cosmos only to leave it unoccupied. There had to be creatures able to enjoy its beauty because God wants all his work to be appreciated. This is a conclusion which is not only probable, but absolutely true, for the contrary opinion would deprive the deity of the most distinctive attribute of his nature, practically denying him the perfection of infinite wisdom and intelligence. One might think that living on other worlds is difficult, but Dick assures us that they are organized just like Earth, with mountains, valleys, and all the other landforms. The moon, in particular, has an immense variety of ups and downs. Also, although we cannot directly observe such features on Jupiter, Saturn, or Uranus, given their distance, when light hits them, it reveals the spots and differences of shade and color that are sometimes distinguishable in the disk sail, emphasizing the uneven surfaces below. We know today, of course, that all of these are, in fact, gas giants. God endowed other planetary bodies with atmospheres, but we have no reason to conclude that they are exactly similar to ours. Mars' atmosphere, for example, is denser than ours, which gives the planet that beautiful red hue. It's actually less dense. However, there is the problem of the crushing gravity of a planet the size of Saturn, although Dick postulates that Jupiter's density is slightly greater than that of water, and that of Saturn about the density of cork. Jupiter would therefore have a gravity only twice that of Earth. Bizarre as this may seem, the Scottish astronomer was rigorous about his theory. He was no mere daydreamer. He had calculations and principles ready, and with their help he formulated a flawed idea, but somehow logically assembled. And he wasn't even the first scientist to claim that life existed elsewhere in our solar system. Far from it. The famous astronomer William Herschel claimed that there is life not only on all planets, but also on the sun. That blinding glow we see is simply a luminous atmosphere hiding a rocky surface teeming with life. Interestingly, it was Herschel's son, John, who indirectly eclipsed Dick in an incredible way, as you will see below. Giants on the Moon on August 21, 1835, the New York Sun newspaper published an explosive news. The astronomer John Herschel erected a huge telescope in South Africa, which could magnify the heavenly bodies 42,000 times. And when he turned his gaze to the moon, he saw a field of poppies. It was all a hoax, but the paper sold like hot cakes. Four days later, the publication dropped another bombshell. Herschel saw bison on the moon. And not just bison, but lead blue, goat-sized, headed and bearded, one-horned monsters. Moreover, these bipedal monsters were as tall as humans. According to the account in the sun, they walked gracefully among their villages of tall huts, all with chimneys, showing that they were familiar with the use of fire. Then, on August 28th, came an unexpected twist. 
Herschel had seen people up there on the moon, beings 1.5 meters tall, with short, shiny, copper-colored hair, and wings composed of a thin membrane, the paper reported. They had built gigantic sapphire pyramids and were big cucumber lovers. Perhaps most important to hoax journalists Richard Adams Locke, a descendant of the philosopher John Locke, and the paper's editor, Moses Beach, is that the New York Times and New York Evening Post endorsed the claims as entirely plausible. Thanks to this, the authors compiled their stories into a book Great Astronomical Discoveries lately made by Sir John Herschel at the Cape of Good Hope, and thus 60,000 copies were sold in a flash. Finally, Locke made the mistake of confiding his secret to a journalist friend, as if one more warning was needed not to confide secrets to journalists, and everything came crashing down. The Sun argued that it had all been, in fact, for the benefit of the general public, to persuade the population to turn their attention to other issues. Dick died in 1857, and his books about the many beings in the universe soon went out of print.